back to this exciting world of camp programming and CNC. Today, I'm going to teach you... Hey, what's going on down there? What? They, they like me better. Regardless of uh, your opinion, I do the introduction. What you the heck what? do you think you're doing? You need a timeout in the void. I'll get you for this! Hello everyone and welcome back to this exciting world of CAM programming and CNC. Yeah, that's, that's better. Today I, and only I, will be stepping you through setting up a Fusion 360's CAM software to run apart on a CNC lathe. A lathe is a machine in which work is rotated about a horizontal axis and shaped by a fixed tool. Think of it like a mill, turn on its side. And instead of inserting tools into the spindle, you insert material to be cut down by a stationary cutting tool. On both lathes and mills, the center of the spinny bit is the Z-axis. You can have multiple axis machines where you fix your workpiece into a spindle and another spindle has a cutting tool or the table rotates or the entire machine spins around the shop like a possessed demon. The point is, there are many kinds of machines available for machinists to minimize tool changes and cutting time. These more elaborate machines can also make more complex parts, but can also be extremely expensive and uncommon in smaller machine shops. That is why it is important to know the shop's capabilities when presenting a design especially if the company you work for does its fabrication in-house. Another thing to mention is that if you have both a CNC lathe and a CNC mill, some of your designs can be done in steps using both machines with multiple setups. The lathe we will be programming in the ME lab is a two-axis CNC lathe with an eight-tool turret, making this one of the easiest machines to set up and operate in our shop. The tools are already set up in the machine and zero to a specific X depth and Z offset so that when you lock a piece of material in the chuck, you only have to set the Z offset on one tool to run apart. As I mentioned earlier, our CNC lathes only have two axes. The Z axis travels along the carriage, which is your longest travel distance. Your X axis is your cross slide, which determines how deep of a cut you will make and how much material you will remove in one pass. Lathes are well known for making round parts, smaller round parts. However, like milling, they can be set up in all kinds of different configurations. For instance, the chuck can be swapped out for different chuck configurations, such as multiple jaw chucks, collar holders, or face plates. A four jaw chuck can hold a square pieces of material, whereas a faceplate can hold material with just about any geometry. However, you would need to be careful not to unbalance the load on the lathe too much as it could make it difficult to cut and could cause strain on the machine. While working on a lathe, especially with a three jaw chuck, you wanna minimize your setups because once you remove your material, you lose the trueness of your Z axis. On your first setup, it doesn't really matter if your material is slightly off center because as soon as you make a complete pass, your material will be true with respect to that axis. This is why collet holders are so nice on a lathe. The collet covers the most amount of surface area for your workpiece. They also make swapping parts quite easy. For the crank pin, we were able to complete the part in one operation, making the three jaw chuck ideal for this job. The first thing we need to do is head to the website and download a few things because we're working on a different machine. Head to the website and click on using Fusion 360 software from blah, 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 and download the latest tool library, crank pin, and post processor for the Tormach 15L Slant Pro, or as I like to call it, Kyle, because come on, doesn't he just look like a Kyle? Kyle is a fictitious name given to an otherwise non-sentient object. Any likenesses to students, staff, or faculty members is purely coincidental. UCSD and Tormach waive all liability with regards to Kyle's personality, temperament, or predisposition to world domination. At no time should any biological organism stare directly into Kyle's eyes, as this could result in a total collapse of the time-space continuum, as agreed upon by quantum mechanics. If communication is required with Kyle, soft-spoken words are recommended to avoid an irrational response from the non-entity referred to as Kyle. I was just informed that I was handed the wrong script from a crazy person, and all statements from the following disclaimer should be disregarded with the exception of Kyle as a fictitious name. All right. 
Let's head back to Fusion 360 and upload the crank pin to your MAE 156A folder. Close out the upload screen and double click on the crank pin to bring it up to your workspace. Next, click on the data panel to minimize it, giving yourself more room to stretch out. Looking at the crank pin, we will need to establish a geometry for it. If we choose this as our front, it would not only be difficult to cut the threads here, but because it is so narrow here at the thread relief, the tool pressure would cause the material to deflect. This tool deflection is something I will cover more in the lathe setup video. For now, we will choose the front face of our model as our Z0, and everything past this point will be in the negative Z range. Let's set up the material and geometry by clicking on Setup, New Setup, this time, your operation type will be turning or mill turn. As you can see, it will change the axis automatically. The direction of the X and Y do not matter because we will only be using the X axis on the lathe. Let's set the chuck reference to negative 0.25. This will tell us if any of the tools will collide with the chuck. Head to your stock tab and select fixed size cylinder for your mode. We will be using a stock diameter of 0.5 inches and a length of 2 inches. Change your model position to offset from the front at 20 thousandths offset. This will give us enough material to face off, alleviating any inconsistencies in the initial stock. Click OK to save your setup. Your Z axis should be pointing positive away from the model and starting at 20 thousandths past. At the top of Fusion, you will see the menu tabs. Make sure that you select turning. The first operation we will do is a facing operation. Click on turning, turning face, and click on your tool select. Right click on local, import libraries, and import the lathe tools for class dot tools. Now select tool two, the 55 degree diamond. We will use this tool for facing and most roughing operations. The feeds and speeds are set up for you so click on the Geometry tab. By default, the program selects the front face of the model, which is what we want. So click on the Radius tab. This is a lot like your Heights tab during milling operations. Let's lower the offsets because we have no additional material to deal with. Set your clearance from Retract at 100 thousandths and your Retract from Stock OD also at 0.1. Let's change the distance to cut below the Radius at 20 thousandths. This is because this is because we want to make sure the face of our part is flat all the way across. What, what's going on here? <laughs> you can't get rid of me that easily, Warden. Well, anyway, take a look at the lathe tools and notice that they don't come to a sharp point. Instead, they have a radius as their cutting edge. This helps to alleviate grooving the material and gives the material a better finish. This radius can leave a bit of material in the center known as a pit. To circumvent this, we can set our depth of cut below the axis slightly. A pip can also be caused by tool heights. However, the tool heights are fixed on CNC's, so no adjustment is necessary. Click OK to reveal the tool path. Hey, hey, uh, I'm not done yet. Oh, you're done. Well, sorry about that, guys. Moving on, next thing we want to do is rough out the general shape of the model. Turning profile roughing is an aggressive cut that leaves a rough surface finish but cuts much faster. We'll use the same tool as the facing operation, the 55 degree right hand lathe tool. The feeds or speeds are set up so click on the geometry tab. This is also set up by default because it takes into account the entire model. Let's head to the next tab and set your clearance radius from stock to leave at 0.1. Under the passes tab, change your Z stock to leave to 0 and click OK. Alright, time to give this thing a nice surface finish. <laughs> click on the turning pull down menu and click on turning profile finishing. We're going to switch tools so that we can get into the tighter areas. Go to your tool select and select tool number 4 from the lay tools from class and click OK. As you can see, the angle of the tool is sharper, allowing you to get into the tighter areas. Once again, feeds and speeds are set, 
So click on your geometry tab. The geometry should be confined to the front and back of the model, so click on the radius tab. Set your clearance offset to 100 thousandths from stock OD and click on your passes tab. On this tab, we will select a spring pass. A spring pass helps to alleviate some of the material left over from the tool deflection. After the material is cut, it springs back and is then recut along the same path. Now we'll click OK and... Well, look at that! You got a warning! What are you even doing? I did that on purpose to show that... Sure you did! Well, I will tell them how to fix it. If you click on the warning, it will tell you what went wrong. In this case, the program was trying to lead out after hitting that ledge and colliding with the material. The program automatically modified the lead out to avoid collision. However, you should not run the program with warnings. To fix this, right click on the finishing operation and click edit. Head to your linking tab and uncheck the lead out and click OK. This will remove your lead out and avoid the warning. Okay, great. Now, uh, now go away. I don't know how you're even getting out anyway. <laughs> For our next step, we need to thread the end of the crank pin to quarter 20 threads. Click on turning, turning thread. Head to your tool menu and select tool number eight, the threading tool. Under the geometry tab, select this surface to be threaded. Let's change the front side stock offset to 0.1 to minimize the tool path. Now change your back side offset to 80 thousandths, which would put us in the center of the thread relief. A thread relief or relief groove are used to provide clearance for the cutting tool. In this case, we want the crank pin to thread completely into the Geneva round. We also want to avoid crashing the thread into the face. Now click on the radius tab and change your clearance offset to 100 thousandths. Head to your next tab and let's input the thread parameters. You can find this information using the machinist handbook, searching online and simple calculations. If you scroll over the text box, it will bring up the formula for the thread pitch and depth. For the thread pitch, it is one divided by the threads per inch. We're using quarter 20 threads the 20 represents 20 threads per inch. 1 divided by 20 is 0 0.05, so insert it there. For the thread depth, we calculate the minor subtracted from the major and divide by 2. We look these values up in the machinist handbook. The different classes refer to the tightness of fit. The higher the class, the tighter the fit. The major diameter has a max and min. Generally, I use the average of the two. Using a fit tolerance of 2A, we find that the average of 0.2489 and 0.2408, which gives us 0.24485. Subtract the minor of 0.1894 and divide by 2, giving us a total of 0 0.027725. To make it easy, let's round up to 0 0.028 for our thread depth. When working with CNC's, it may take a few tries to obtain the perfect thread depth whether it's on a program or the depth set by the machine. Let's also set the step downs to five and add a spring pass. Then click OK to save your toolpath. I'm back. Fine, fine, go ahead. After threading, the material will be forced up in the direction of the cutting tool. In order to counteract this, let's make another finishing pass over top of the threads. We can go through that entire process again, or we could just copy and modify the existing toolpath. Right click on the profile finishing operation and select duplicate. Also, duplicate thread operation because we'll go over them one more time to clean them up. Your duplicated toolpaths will have a number in parentheses next to them. In order to move the order of operation, click in a blank area of your workspace to deselect any current operation. Then you can drag an operation to change the order. A blue line indicates where they will be placed. Edit your second finishing profile and head to your geometry tab. Change back mode to selection and click on the face. Next, set the offset from the face at 50 thousandths because we only want to clean up the threads. 
not the rest of the park. Head to your passes tab and change the direction to back to front, which will knock down the burrs built up from the thread tool. Now click OK. All right, now back to your cell. Bye. Let's edit your second thread operation and head to your passes tab. Since we are just cleaning up the threads, change your passes to two. Deselect the spring pass and click OK. For the last operation, we will remove the completed part from the stock using a parting tool. Click on turning, then turning part. Click on the tool menu and select tool number six, the .125 groove tool. After selecting the tool, you can see that the initial tool path is set at 125 thousandths behind the part. This is because the program takes into account the width of the parting tool. If you were to set up a different grooving tool on the lathe, you must make sure that the width of the tool is the same as the width programmed in the tool library. Another thing to know is the checkbox labeled used constant surface speed. While setting up feeds and speeds, the cutting feed rate is determined by the radius from the z-axis. On a mill, this will be your end mill or drill bit. On a lathe, it will be the material thickness. This is because the angular velocity increases with the diameter of the material. Using constant surface speed will increase the RPM as the diameter decreases, allowing the cutting speed and chip load to remain constant. Now head to your geometry tab and select edge break. A grooving tool does not have a cutting relief on its side, forcing material to build up on the part along the cutting edge of your tool. Selecting an edge break will remove this burr caused by the grooving tool. Let's lower the chamfer width to 15 thousandths and click on the radio tab. Change your clearance offset from stock OD to 150 thousandths to minimize the tool path but still allowing enough room to extract chips and avoid tool collision. We don't need to change anything else, so click OK to save the changes. All right, let's run a simulation to verify our tool paths. Right click on setup and select simulate. Make sure that the stock box is selected and look for any crashes in the timeline. Select play and watch the simulation work its magic. When you are satisfied with your simulation, close out the simulation program. The final step is to post the process. Right click on your setup and select post process. You will need to add the post processor from your file folder. To do so, click on the ellipses icon in the upper right of the post processor menu. Select the file location of your post that you downloaded from the website. Remember that the file will not be visible for whatever reason. You will have to have faith that it's there. Click select folder and the file should appear under the post configuration labeled Tormach Turning Path Pilot. Create a program name and comment. In the menu box in the bottom right, change the maximum spindle speed to 2500 RPM. Because we use constant surface speed for some of the tools, the RPM the program asks for exceeds the machine's capabilities. Lowering the maximum RPM in the post keeps it within the machine's range. Now click post and save your post to the destination folder. If something is wrong with your post, such as using the wrong post processor, it will show up in the beginning of your G code. Verify your program name and comment and take a look at the tools and operations that they are responsible for. Once done, close out the G code editor and marvel at your handiwork. No jail can contain me! I am inevitable! <laughs> Join us for the exciting conclusion of our video series where we show you how to set up the CNT lathe! Cheerio!